Hey, it's Hopper. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Fuck. I don't know the words. Moving I'm bad on. with there it is. And then it how does it start? <laughs> that sounds like dum 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 Mr. Sandman <laughs> Bring me a dream. Two different genres of music. <laughs> but let's be honest, most of the Eurythmics songs sound like who sings Mr. Sandman? <sighs> I'm horrible. I don't know who I'm, sings what. I don't know who sings what. That's not true. I, I know, know that All for One sings I Swear, and I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm i so bad with the lyrics of songs, but that, what you just sang, which if you had asked me, what do you like better, the Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams, or Mr. Sandman, that's a tough call. That is a tough call. But the way you went into it was so charming and adorable, Thank you. which uh, could be another title for a special. Yeah. Uh, but that song is used for like what, like really sweet, like laundry commercials or <laughs> kids making homemade dinners that mom showed them they could do because times are tough and yeah. you got to make your own food now, Caleb. I feel like sorting laundry. Yeah. Or like cleaning something. Yeah. Do you? Uh, do you sort laundry? Yeah. Are you? Good? <laughs> do you do your own laundry? What if I just finish all your sentences the rest Guess of your podcast? Guess what? Totally fine with that <laughs> version of this. I don't know. I finally sort. I used to just throw everything in for years. Uh, Not, I wouldn't do lights and darks. I didn't, wow, making it a racial thing right out of the gate. <laughs> oh, no. No, you're fine. We'll keep this in. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. Wait, wait uh, did you uh, even like know the right temperatures to put things on? Yeah, that I knew. I don't like how it's cold for dark. I feel yeah. like I feel like everything should be hot. Burn out the germs. I feel like that too. How do do we look normal? We do. We look great. Honestly, look great. it feels very. This feels like, I very. It's it's hard to tell which side is I'm touching. Do you know when you're like a? I don't know how the weather you look, people do it. You look. Oh boy, have you ever tried to do that? Uh, as I a, just failed. I just failed. Yeah, Gage, you want to take Over us off here. the screen? I think we're gonna be looking at each other at, at ourselves the whole time. No, it, I won't. I promise I won't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I was like, what do you like? Do you like to see yourself? Have I, you watched your special? Have I watched it? Yeah, I did watch it. Yeah, did With you friends. love it? I, 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 I it's did really have good. fun. Thank it's you. Really good. Yeah, it's it's my um, it's not fiance. Uh, <laughs> I I saw yeah. that. Congratulations. Pretty cool. Yeah. She. I was loves that came you. out of left field. Yeah. For me, for yeah. me, because we haven't seen each other in a long time. Yeah. I was like, wait, Adam's engaged. Yeah. Well, I just met her through. We, I was trying to buy a futon on Craigslist, <laughs> I her, and I had scared. the ring, and I dropped it in front of her and said, "It's a sign." <laughs> uh, I told that story to one of my mom's friends. Did not laugh like that. Just didn't get it. Was like, "Well, that seems like a very unconventional way." I was like, <laughs> "You are old and Jewish, <laughs> and don't pick up on sarcasm because everything is literal." She's like, "So you're telling me there's a chance?" <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But so uh, she watched it with me and uh, huge fan. Wow. She'd seen you at the store a few times and. And I didn't think, didn't like me because nobody there likes me. Nope. <laughs> See, you're finishing my thought and you're wrong. Uh, nope. Uh, and I've showed her uh, Conan sets because I think she. Once she started to be around me and stand up more, I was like, well, now you got to see who I like because. Yeah. Uh, you're going to see a lot and you're going to start to develop tastes and and you're probably going to become almost like a comic where you see so much that you don't want to see a lot. Yeah. You know where you're just like, there's, I, somebody asked me this the other day, uh, just like who my favorite comics were and I think I said Chappelle as someone who was like household name and then yourself. Thank you. People that are in that next tier of like very well known and in the comic world and entertainment business uh, you know, get get their due cred, but but people that maybe only pay attention to like, you know, 
uh, giant billboards or movies that go, right. well, I haven't seen them in a Fast and Furious film, <laughs> so are you sure they're that funny? I know. Isn't it, it's just such an interesting thing with that because I feel like we're constantly battling... I don't know. Like I don't. We don't. Have, I honestly don't want to get into this too much because it's annoying. And but whatever. But the idea no. that it feels like we're still battling the women are funny thing or women only talk about sex and it's just like man. Okay, but have you? It, it's the same idea of this isn't funny. It's like well, how nice for your life that you think everything placed before you is for you, <laughs> yeah. king. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not everybody's gonna like you. That's fine. But it's just interesting that people couldn't understand the concept that there are gatekeepers. There are people that are chosen to be shown to you. Yes. So if you want to know that there's more, you have to seek out more. Yes. Also, guys talk about sex stuff too. Yeah, like, of course. That's I've always been confused by that when they're like, God, these women, they talk about sex jokes. Yeah. It's like your stuff up top uh, about condoms <laughs> was so fucking clever. Thank In you. Girl Daddy on HBO Max streaming now. Please watch it. By the way, big fan of HBO Max. Yeah, was they got a lot of stuff. very trepidatious. But I agree. I mean, same. Just because it's like, you're like, another streaming system. I agree. And I don't know who that guy was, but another, <laughs> you know, another thing to not even pay for. Um, but just to I deal with. Money, but yeah, it's, <laughs> God, could I, could I dress more like one of the uh, Lost Boys from I kind of love it. Okay, I thanks. feel, yeah, it makes hey, me feel comfortable. Hey, I'm pushing 40. I'm I hanging with my is, friend. Thank you. Yeah, we're yeah, at home. I'm comfy. But uh, I agree with you. Yeah, it's tough because, like, you know, we already sit down and it's tough to open one streaming service and decide what to yep. watch, let alone six different streaming yep. services. Yep. Uh, the color scheme is, um, I was on board with right away. Thank I'm you. I'm like, uh, it was lit beautifully. That was, it was cool, too, that, um, that my girl uh, commented on after laughing uh, how beautifully it was shot. Audience was mic'd so well. Yes. Which is. For whatever reason, not like something that happens on every special. I, and look, I don't have a special. Uh, someday. HBO Max. Hello. Uh, I love your service. <laughs> but like, I, I I know what I w- am going to want to do and when uh, and and what I like. And to me, it's like, man, you got to fucking hear the crowd. And it looked intimate, but looked like spacious. So I'm so happy to hear all this stuff because I obviously cared a lot i thought you could tell and uh and i think you have to and and probably were part of the editing process which i feel like for any of us look you got to review the game tape and watch especially the special probably really make sure that you're a part of that so that you you know they're not cutting on a punchline or or just i don't know even a different angle sometimes for a joke of or if they're pushing in on a slow zoom on a part where you're like just keep it on me for that chunk, that little chunk, and then maybe right like that. Yeah, and still the un- and then there's still the unknown variables. Like I don't, I'll talk about it. I don't want to draw attention to it because I'm like, but there is one part that has, what is it, three thousand times gone differently. Yeah, and I know, and it that night it didn't, and I was just like, okay, and it's not that it, it's not a bomb. It's a reaction that I was used to. Yep. So normally I'll say. Um, I'll say there's not a woman in, in here who doesn't love orgasming, and the and the crowd goes woo woo woo, and I go see, it's the sex that's the problem. <laughs> now, so so that's the joke. Yeah. And for whatever reason, no one in Minneapolis loved orgasming enough to go woo woo. And of course, like if I think if like obviously we have to be on our feet always, and yes. I was even that night. Yes. That woman started talking to me. Like I I awesome. initiate contact with people, so I have to be prepared for that. The guy who you were like, uh, you like he said something about comms, and you're like, yeah, and you 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 put you know. Words he in his mouth shocked about, me. He goes, I don't like I, that. I don't work. Yeah. yeah, and it made me laugh. Yeah, it, was, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So like you know, I'm ready for that, but I wasn't ready for them to not respond to that because I just am so used to them responding like woo we love that and it, of course now I would go and I would say something like along the lines of like wait do we have a huge problem in Minneapolis with women very funny <laughs> and a good coming? detour yeah but you, know you, what I mean? but you were conditioned to set up to go get it, that woo yes. and then the, the beat the timing and then yes. it's a sexist problem so I watch it back and that's I, I basically like you're saying being in the editing room I was like let's just let's just clip it together and make it one sentence Cool. So normally it's two parts, but in the special, and I'm ruining this for everyone. Um, <laughs> Hollywood insights. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. The in the special, back. I just say, uh, there's not a woman who, who doesn't love organizing. Yeah. It's a sex is the problem. So yeah. it's still, still fine. Still funny, still hits. But it's way more fun than the other million times it went that other way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's nobody there. Hey guys, comedian Adam right here. Hope you're enjoying this episode of the About Last Night podcast. 
Boy, I gotta tell you, I've been feeling good lately. And the reason why? Koi CBD. That's right. Back in the game. Feeling like my best self. Look, Koi CBD is the best CBD company in the business. I don't care what you hear from other people, other comics. Koi CDB, CBD. See, I got so much BBD, CBD inside me. I ain't even fucking talking right. You know why? Because I slept well on the Koi CBD gummies. That's right. They've got everything from tinctures to bath bombs to gummies. Uh, they got a skincare line coming soon. They got hand sanitizer during these times. It's very important. So, what you want to do, if you want to start feeling like your best self, you want to take some Koi CBD bombs, put them in the bath, okay? What? Yeah, come on in. Jackson, I'm doing an ad for my podcast. Can you say, hi? Hello. Say, I use CBD gummies. I use CBD gummies. From Koi. From Koi. Koi's the best. Koi's the best. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. I feel like my best self. I feel like my best self. Look at these muscles. Look at these muscles. Kiss them. If you get Koi CBD right now, you go to KoiCBD.com, promo code about last night, and you get 20% off your first order. That's incredible. Bath bombs, tinctures, skincare, hand sanitizer, gummies. They've got everything. They're my favorite. It's who I use. So start using it for you too. I can't recommend these guys enough. They're homies and all their shit works. Jackson, say 20% off. 20% off. If you use the promo code about last night. If you use the print card after night. About last night. About last night. Show them those guns again. Kiss them. Mm. Enjoy the rest of the episode. I love those types of things where you can kind of set the audience up for yeah. something and they react. And because even because those types of things are uh, contained enough to where it's not taken away from the show. It's not a heckle. It's funny when people hear. No one's like, dude, stop wooing for orgasms. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a, yeah. It's because not every, you know, not everyone's gonna do it. It's yeah. not a full unified response. Uh, Even if one woman had gone, wow, yeah. you know what I mean? I would have been like, it's yeah. just her and me then. Very, funny. you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But it You're, was interesting that there. Did you take much. improv uh, ever, or have you always just been a good listener? I definitely we'll be not right a good back. listener. No. <laughs> That sounded like a real teaser of a question. <laughs> God, I wish I had commercials. HBO Max. <laughs> um, Could put some Looney Tunes in right there. I, speaking of not a good listener, I was about to go, wait, wait what's the question? Yeah. No, improv. I took it when I thought I was, just was done with stand-up. Like, year three of stand-up, I was like, this might not be for me. And I was in Chicago, and it was cold, and I was sad. And I was just like, I don't know, maybe I won't do stand-up anymore. And I took improv classes at The Annoyance. Ooh. So I went through that. I think it was about, uh, I guess I was in, in the classes for a year or so, yeah. something like that. The weather, real quick, uh, that's a real thing of it having an effect on your mood. That's yeah? true. Yeah. I mean, like. Very much. Growing up in Seattle, I did not, I think you grow, in, wait, in Chicago, right? Chicago. So I'm from Ohio, but I that's started right. standing up in Chicago right. when I, this is my adult beginnings, like on your own. But even in Ohio, as a as a as a youngster trying to find like activities and stay happy, it's like when you grow up in that weather, I don't think you know anything different. Right. So you you're just kind of like, oh cool, if it's like shit weather, I figure out things to do indoors, and if that if they end up being things that are more creative than not, then that's good, so I can be more busy, and then maybe that'll pay off later in life when I know how to mm -hmm. uh, keep myself entertained. But so and then Chicago. You got a little bit of the bug from those improv classes, right? Yeah, I mean, like, but like you're saying, I, I mean, the jokes that I was writing at the time, I, I remember like waking up because I was working several jobs and typically morning, so I could do stamp at night. And you know, you work really early and then get home around three or something. And if I wasn't babysitting, I'd take a nap, and then before your show at eight or whatever. And I remember sometimes waking up at six, just like, <laughs> why are we living? You know what I mean? Where you're just you like look at a bookshelf and 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 you're like. Why do I even have those? By the way, you know all great mean? premises to jokes <laughs> for a crowd that you want to walk out. Yeah. Why are like, we even yeah, here? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, we, did, Wait, we came what? here to have fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure I tried it on stage back then. <laughs> you guys ever want to why look at look at a bookshelf and have an existential crisis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, so um, I took the improv because also I was a little scared of mm. crowd work. I was really scared, I should say, of crowd work I, uh, because... In Chicago, at open mics and stuff, which I didn't do a ton of, a lot of the dudes would just yap, bitty yap, throw stuff at you, heckle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying they're a bunch of mean guys, but like that was the atmosphere. Not always, but a lot of heckling. I don't know. Yeah. That's just how the mics were. And it scared me. 
Because uh, I was coming from theater where like I have a script, so please don't interrupt. Oh yeah, so you weren't used to any like fourth wall breaking. Yeah, so uh, I was just scared of the boys and scared of crowds. They what would they yell? Um, I mean, they used to give me a hard time. Like, were you gonna go up there and whisper your punchlines? You know, stuff like that. But like, also, why? Because you were. I was just quieter. Yeah. And subtle and just like. Which is also which is a style and which yeah. is still. I feel like I'm a little closer to myself now, but I I'm still like. With not withdrawn, but I'm chill. People yeah. think I'm high all the time, and I'm not. For real? Yeah. I get that quite a bit as well. Yeah. And but uh, you're you you're vivacious. You have energy. You yeah, but that's still people can be like you're a, a stoner an energy, dude, an energetic stoner, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like no, I just I'm just tired. But uh, <laughs> but it's like how do you get rid of these circles? But also uh, also I, I know like when I laugh, my eyes. I think most people like my I it's like oh that, yeah it's that a lot. Yes. So I, but I hate, I'll take that versus the alternative. Like, who wants to laugh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, okay, yeah, I wish you were high. <laughs> Just why not? <laughs> yeah. And also, I mean, who wants to, nobody wants to be the cokehead person. No way. Or like the constantly on. Oh, Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> By the way, I don't know how much you're paying attention to any of that stuff. I take it in doses because I can't get consumed. Yeah. Although I was dealing with just a lot of, uh, just doing a lot of having a nice little block party today on Instagram with people that uh, that think it's okay just to shoot people, but um, Mm-mm. crazy. It's spending too much time on that, but well, it can obviously it can consume you. It's a thousand percent, and I, I and you wanna... don't want to ignore, and you also um, don't. I'm not saying you don't want to ignore, but you don't want it to consume you where you can be on or what incapacitated. Yes. Uh, what is your uh, kind of stance on that? Because I have, you know, I I. I, I I've always kind of not been um, uh, timid to to post opinions, whether it be political or or you know um, you know dealing with uh, just social injustice and and anything like that. And mm-hmm. but definitely more so in the past couple of years. And I've heard co- uh, comics on podcasts uh, talk about how they just really dogging on comics and people that that all of a sudden are coming out like, what are you really doing by posting all this stuff? And whatever. And I was like, oh, man, are they talking about me? And and uh, Right, I can understand that. Cla- and then I would see people that are just flooding the comment things like, obviously, like, stick to comedy and nobody fucking cares. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm a person first. And, and in my eyes, I was like, oh, I'm using my platform to kind of... Yeah. But then I made me look like, well, what is what am I really doing other than just voicing my opinion and, I guess, letting people know that... But it was I was so compelled on some of these levels... Recently, of things I was posting and getting such backlash that was so crazy, wow. and people were even in the comment threads That's... like, "Didn't realize you had so many right wing, crazy, white supremacist, whatever people." And I'm like, "Yeah, me neither." Like these comments are bonkers. Yeah, drain the swamp for yourself. Yeah, and so, and then you're just like, "I got," I, and then, and then I remember talking to. Um, uh, Brad uh, Williams about it, and he was like, "Yeah, that's why I don't even do it." And and I was like, "Well, I get that, but also like, you got a bigger platform than I do, so like." Well, I, I yeah, know, it'd be nice I know, if you would. But yeah, and I, but I again, I you, to each you know, their own. Totally. It, look, I understand everything you're saying. It is complicated. Sometimes I feel like, just in general, it's jokes. And I mean, you just watched my special. Sometimes I feel like if I have a choice of what I say and I can choose to help or hurt, I would rather help and make it funny, like in my own terms. Yeah. I mean, again, it's also tough because we all feel very open. Uh, like open targets, you yeah. know, right? So, so even if you mean well, or like I could get somebody could be like, what, "What are you looking at? What do you mean? We don't need your help." It's like, well, you don't even know what I'm talking about. To me, I'm talking about my own personal experiences, sharing them in a way that I hope will help other people that relate to them. Yes. So that's my version of it. Yep. But yeah, of course, I hear all those same things. Like, oh gosh, but I saw somebody tweet something like, "I'm going to do a whole hour about blank," and I'm like, "Oh, is that about me?" You know, like you're going to always worry because I guess we're comics, and yes, we do yeah. rely on reaction. Yeah. But I agree with you in the sense that it's like, sure, you could post nothing and um, say you're making the calls like to some of these, some of these um, like district attorneys mm-hmm. and, and DAs and sheriffs that are um, committing crimes against their citizens that are black. You can call and add your voice. And you don't need to post your call log and do this. So you could do that and not post anything. It's, but it's also like, to to me, I found that when you post, you're just saying like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And um, you can too. Like to me, it's like, let's try to all 
be in, in this together in the yeah. way. Not to, people think you're trying you to rile be... people up. I'm not trying to like. Let's be like you're just another sheep and blah blah and it's this, this and like you don't even know half the story. There's always this and it's like and then you're and then I'm like getting in these comment wars about like, well there's actually no proof for that like you're now you're just but it's not even worth it it's, but it's not like worth your energy point, because that I'm, person shouldn't even be allowed to talk to you <laughs> i know right and social it's, media was invented oh they'll be <laughs> and now they can i know it the, that you is, should just start responding you shouldn't be allowed to talk to me <laughs> i know well so i usually just, go i try to always take and i like the way of like if there was a way to comedically post something but people if you even post something like which I was doing with with Black Lives Matter uh, and and posting some things. Even if I was trying to make a, a joke so that it was still in the comedy right. backdrop, you, you, what part of your job essentially? Right. Because but... I'm like, I, but but then I go, man, twenty three hours of the day, I, I'm it's comedy coming through the feed, and a lot of it. And by the way, for free. Yeah. So it's just like all this stuff. You're just like, I'm trying to just, you know, that's that's fun and, and an outlet for me, but also trying to. You know, and I get a lot of sweet messages of people, you know, that are like, man, it's been a rough week, it's blah, 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 and it's nice to go, and you're one of the things I go to, and you're putting all this stuff, and these things, these little quick laughs or a little bump of of joy, and, uh, but then you go, all right, well, even if I posted a joke in some sort of a Black Lives Matter post, the people who are going to want to have a problem with it aren't going to see any of the attempt to try to, like, light, you know, have yeah. some comedy in there, too, which Love also it feels like a weird way to even uh, go about it but uh I-, I think you know you uh and your special was so light and fun but still personal that's one thing that when i first saw you i don't know where i first saw you and we might have talked about this before. i know i'm like where did we meet well i know when we first like got to become homies which was you me and thomas dale in Colo- colorado <laughs> We went to go see Black Mass. We're going to see Black, uh, and we did a college Mass. together. The Johnny which was Depp very fun. M- mobster movie, and the college was great. And why it was great because you, me, and Thomas Dale. It's also like a really <laughs> great collection of people that are fun and upbeat. Yeah, down for a hang. Like, you and know, we're all, we all do our own thing. We right? all do our own thing, but it was, and we'd never hung together, and that's why that really was at a time when I was just like, God, I fucking am so glad that I stuck with this for moments like this where it was like people I'd wanted to get to know but you're at the clubs and and everyone's kind of in their lanes and doing their things and you might be on after someone or before and then they're bouncing or going to another set or or um you know you need a good uh I think I met you through Andrew Santino the first time at the improv at the uh that new bar that they had built in there yeah which is now the lab and uh when it got turned from the lab to the bar that's when we first met and we both kind of shared, I think, like nice pleasantries as far as like, oh yeah, I've seen you, know, like oh, but but then, but it was very goofy right away. Like we were joking, and I was like, oh, that's cool that we both just jumped in the bit boat and didn't do like, I'm a fan of your work. The bit boat. Yeah, I without love a raft, that. and we were just instead of just like, oh, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, I really like your work. Like you know, that would I would have been like, oh fuck, this is we're never gonna we're never gonna go see Black Mass. <laughs> But uh, I have that photo of us three of us three on my wall. Do you really? Uh, I'll send it. I'll text it to you once we get home. That's incredible. Yeah. We went to, uh, or did just Thomas was, and I go to a weed shop, or did we all three go? You guys went, and I think I probably went and got food. Or you napped maybe because it was a fucking like six a.m. flight. I think we had to stop. It was like I, I don't want to say middle of nowhere, Colorado, but right. But it was like it what it wasn't Denver is all the point. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and I remember the one of the kids who was driving us around. That was like a thing. Like I was trying to remember like plot points if you were to sell the script of this uh, uh, show. And there was the college kids that would drive you from the venue to back to the hotel. Uh, ho- ho- horribly drive you. <laughs> oh, yeah. This girl, I mean. I, I remember- love it when the club's like, we'll send your opener to pick you up. I'm like, how old is the opener? <laughs> oh, I remember I made a comment being like, "Are you? do you guys have your licenses? And I remember Thomas being like, oh, you're bad. You can't say that to people. <laughs> And I was like, Thomas, that was like, and then like, and then we hit a couple bumps or she swerved and he was like, okay, bitch, you need to figure out a drive. And then, and then we, uh, and then we went to, uh, this the, is why you were on Mad TV. Yeah. No, I mean, Thomas is just, I mean, that voice, I don't know why we've talked about it many times. I'm like, you need to just create a bunch of animated shows. How and is get he somebody. Not, is he in animation at all? I don't know, man, but it's like, it's truly you know, What's some his, people. Didn't he have like a little catchphrase that all the New York comics used to say? Oh, what? Uh, I don't. So, I forget what it is. 
Look at my little straight boy. I don't know. He just <laughs> he has some sort of catchphrase. <laughs> so uh, in infectious his uh, his cadence. Whoa. Yeah, or something like Hell that. Yeah. I don't even know. It's like a it's yeah, like it's a, a weird gasp <laughs> sigh. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. That's <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but um, but yeah, that was that was a real treat. But very but you're the, even at that point, which I think was like I want to say maybe six seven years ago. Yeah. And then we got high and went to the arcade at the movie theater, which, like, those don't get enough play or credit. We'll never, well, we I don't, certainly couldn't do it now. We were touching everything. It was like, gee, gee, gee. Wow. And then, like, touching things and, like, the wacky. By the way, if there could be a more adorable clip of someone miming playing a <laughs> movie theater arcade shoot 'em up game, ding, ding, bing, boom, <laughs> bing, boom, bing. <laughs> I mean, that's, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> And shows that you're not a violent person. <laughs> Bing, boom, <laughs> beef, ba, boof. <laughs> then you bop them on the head. <laughs> you clean the mallet first before you pop them. Uh, yeah, that I've only ever uh, attended movie theater arcades uh, with my nieces or nephew because it's like, I mean, and, yeah. and good on you for whoever came up with that idea. It's like the Pizza Hut Taco Bell combo. It's like, yeah. these two things are great separate, but what about <laughs> if they're together? <laughs> uh, why better. Dairy Queen and Burger King, just real quick, have not joined forces <laughs> is kind of crazy for some royal fast food of It should be funded gluttony. by Charmin. Just like- <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. They hand you a roll before your meal and after. Uh but you were even at that show were so brilliantly like personal, which is something that I have, have uh strived to be uh more attentive to and I feel like I've gotten better in the last two or three years as as you do as you just get better in general at the craft. But I was always so envious right out of the gate. Like I was just sitting there like she's fucking good at talking a better personal life. <laughs> no, I was uh but you had so much just you just tapped into it and and it made me, because I was always so, not standoffish, but like, oh, what's funny about my family? And But I just hadn't really chosen to, I guess, yet see the funny in it. Because maybe yeah. some stuff that was serious wasn't funny or certain things. I was it like, takes a while, right? everyone's got a mom joke. What's my mom? But then you're like, no, but that's very specific to you. You just need to figure out, um, you know, what your point of view on it is. And well, two things. One, it's hard... To make dark things funny, and that takes practice. Yes. Two, my favorite thing about stand-up is sharing something extremely, um, what am I trying to say, extremely unique or something, something that you think is like only you, Yeah. and then getting a laugh from it. Like that's my favorite part of stand-up. Is, I guess I, I wish I could come up with a better word right now. My mind's going blank. But like something so unique and weird that you think only you do it Mm. and then sharing it and get a laugh that's my favorite thing yeah because it's like how could you possibly be laughing in those it's only me who does this thing yeah yeah yeah. so i think it's like um trial and error of that uh did you uh was that the first kind of i don't know chunk of material that you would like dive into when you first started writing or were you writing topical never topical topical scared me for the longest time i think right i mean i I got a new charmin bit yeah, <laughs> one of my oldest, or I'm trying to think like an old, old bit from Chicago days that was topical, and of course I don't like it now, but it was along the lines of, was it Dole was running? Bob thought, Dole? I immediately thought of the uh, the orange or the, yeah. the lemon. Maybe it was Bob Dole, Dole or juice. one of the candidates yeah. for president. Bob Dole, yes, he was running, Something, yeah. I remember making some joke like, oh, what is this, his make-a-wish? And now it's like, eh, of course. It's, it's You know, like, I wouldn't do it now, but I think... Back then, I was like, I'm doing a topical joke. You know, like, this is Very crazy funny. for me. Well, you wouldn't do it now. Why? Because Make-A-Wish jokes, you think are hack or? A little hack. Everyone's got a Make-A-Wish joke. Yeah, a little hack. And then I'm just sort of, I don't know. It's so hard. You, there's so much content in the world now with I Twitter know. and all the apps and memes. Like, you know, I, one of uh, like, uh, tw- Tweets going viral. You know what I mean? Like, in the sense that it's like, then that's a joke. I forget one of mine. People get writing jobs based on that shit, don't they? I know. So one of the ones that, it didn't go viral at all, but it just did well, was like, my favorite comedian is memes. That was the tweet. That was yours? Yeah. That's really funny. And it's like, true for people. So that bothers me. 
that their favorite comedian well, is memes. Probably got a lot of attention on yeah. it. And there were a lot of people being like, "Me too." Yeah, yeah. Memes. They're like, some people I think retweeted because it it's ironic to them, and other people retweeted because they're like, "Yeah, my favorite comedian is memes." Like, it's just like that bothers me. I think because I am personal, where it's like, invest in someone. Like, look at them, listen to them. It's a human. So, but of course, I also love memes. You do. Well, I mean, they're fun. Who sometimes. doesn't? Of they course. are fun. What do you have one that's uh, coming to mind? That I, yeah, right here. Can you pull Absolutely. one up? Absolutely. Are you kidding? Of course, I have one on the ready. Um, <laughs> Gavin sent me this. Like he's so Gavin is the younger comic I dated for for many years, and at the moment we're just best friends. But you are? Yeah, we're we're friends right now, best friends. Oh, good. Not not currently romantic. But he tweeted, or he sent this to me, because like I joke in the special about dating a younger guy. Yep. And of course, there's that's the other thing we have to think about now. Before you tweet something, before you say something, is it already out there? Like I, I already have those questions anyway. So the more personal you get, the less chance it is that it's gonna already be out there. Yes. So there is that. But I've almost tweeted like, oh, I love dating a younger guy because I can always come to Twitter and find out how he's feeling. You know what I mean? Like it's like. It's really funny. Uh, okay, so. Um, it's a, it's, do you want me to show it to you? It's, yeah. a, it's a T-Rex with glasses on and I, it says on the outside I skirt, skirt, but on the inside I hurt, hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that's who does also, who doesn't love a good T-Rex? Man? Yeah. I love it. You're kind of a monster if you don't. <laughs> There's certain things I go, if you don't find that funny, I feel bad for you. <laughs> if a chubby kid farts in an elevator and you don't <laughs> smile, you're dead inside. You're dead inside. My second favorite thing is fail videos, like people falling. Me too. And stuff. Oh, I mean, if you get something going, you oh. watch it over and over. Tears, tears, and and those. I mean, you seem like a very infectious, genuine laugher, and not like easy to get going. But I feel like if something really gets you, oh my gosh, it, I can laugh until I almost really? barf. That's awesome. And I can remember the times Brody can almost you barf got me until one you time. Laugh? I almost barfed because of Brody at Meltdown one time. Another time was Dana Gould at Tiger Lily. I just mean, yeah, it was it was Dana. Oh, and Eddie Pepitone has got me like that. Pepitone. Well, yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, yeah, once, Brody's string of just like, I mean, when he's just on it and yeah. they're. There are also, of course, times where I was like, Brody's been talking for 40 minutes. I'm pissed. I'm leaving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I literally yeah. left. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, he's definitely got me. Uh, cry, laughing to the point of crying. It's very fun. It's so fun and rare. I mean, I, the times I think about where I truly haven't been able to breathe, uh, special. There was this time, and I've posted this before, I need to figure out a way to make it more out there for the world because Josh Wolf, who has a very great infectious laugh, uh, was on the podcast, and I had taken these uh i think antibiotics or steroids or i think they're steroids <laughs> Stero- <laughs> i've taken these just a bunch of pills they're pills that i found on the street and it said antibiotics and uh um and it was dr- dr- written in crayon but <laughs> but uh and i hadn't eaten you're not supposed to take these steroids mm. on an empty stomach basically and so i started getting these hiccups but these hiccups turned into like deep guttural burps so it was this thing where i would like like almost like like that, but yeah. then this noise would come out that <laughs> that not even not even Steven Spielberg would would <laughs> would say yes. Let's use that one for the Tyrannosaurus in Jurassic Park Five. <laughs> We're doing a fifth. Uh, it it was the movie. It was so crazy, but it kept happening. So it was one of those like we were just saying, like continual. And then there'd be a break, and he started laughing, and the noises kept getting deeper and weirder, <laughs> and I started to get visibly scared because I'm like I don't know if it's gonna stop and, it, and Josh was you just cr- barf but it's like one little pill <laughs> dude it was I mean I, and I never felt like yeah like anything was gonna come up whatever it was just oh, these good. like dry but it was dry and, burps and uh, but the noises were insane I couldn't control it and Josh was crying couldn't breathe at one point was on the ground begging me to stop and then he got back up and then I did it again and then he <laughs> fuck I mean and this video and I had started taping it and it's and I'll watch it every now and then just to, like, feel good because yes. his laugh is so, uh, you know, rare. Yes. Um, do you have uh, uh, people in your family that do that to you or friends that you're like, I know if I go out of my way to hang with this person, I'm going to have a, a good chuckle. Oh, my God. I mean, my sister, I have two older sisters, Megan and Hannah, and my mom. We're just very close. That's It's like a, the, our core four back are they, in Are you Ohio. the funniest? 
I mean, I, I'm professionally funniest, but... Yeah, but you're also a funny hang, and that yeah, matters. they're both very funny. Okay, cool. So, yeah. so the playoff and the Hannah banter. Hannah is sort of more like a sleeper. Like, don't sleep on her, because she'll... For example, like, one one video that I also can watch and just repeat, repeat, die laughing is... I fell asleep at Megan's on her couch. Um, Megan has three kids. Hannah now has four. We're all hanging at, who knows, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whenever it was. And I fall asleep. I'm like perpetually having mono or something. I, I can fall asleep anywhere. Good I think you. just when I get home, I'm like, I can... Zen out. Yeah, I guess. And wow. the kids tire me out. Whenever I'm home with my nieces and nephews, I'm like, oh. I, could I ever be a parent? I know. I think that all the time. Yeah, I'm just like, how do you do that? I'm, I guess maybe because it's a mixture of being home, wanting to relax, and the kids being like, let's play, let's play, let's play. Yeah. And I'm over here like, I think I need to rest, but I do love my family. <laughs> So anyway, I fall asleep all the time in random places. Wow. This was on the couch. Kids are watching TV, or most of them are in bed. Hannah takes one of the little kids, like, I think it was a toy baby bottle, and they're videotaping it. And No, and put, it was a real baby bottle, and puts it in my mouth as I'm sleeping, because I'm like, and so in the video, she puts it in my mouth, and I'm like, <laughs> and then I go, then I wake up, look at it, and I go, and I fling it at her. And it's just like, I can watch that, that on repeat. So funny. Watching someone sleep <laughs> awake to a baby bottle in yeah. their mouth. <laughs> and yeah. then chuck it. It's yeah. just, it's fun. It's very fun. It's, it's fun. <laughs> Try it if you haven't. Try it if you haven't. Good prank. <laughs> Is there a place that you've fallen asleep uh, at that you were like, Uh-oh. like publicly you woke up and it was like, bad yeah many times yeah. one time was on a train t- from chicago to the suburbs and i slept past of i was course. getting picked I've up that. in rosell and i slept isn't that just dev- you i feel like you're waking up my mom in a was like where movie. are you and you I wake like, up and you're like i'm so sorry yeah they say another stop and you're like but that can't be my stop was before this <laughs> yes i mean oh my gosh <laughs> I went to Dave Rispoli. He's a he's a sketch comic that I met in Chicago, mm. and now he's out here. But I went to his family's, I think, Easter on Long Island. Yep. And I mean, I just, they, said, I just they said, yep, to, like, yep, no, yeah. you were there. Yeah. They had to have thought I might have been on some sort of, like, drugs, that, like maybe heroin, like nodding out. I'm not kidding. I fell asleep at the family dinner table. I was falling asleep as we were talking in the living room. I was falling asleep in the... I can't explain it. I think I was just exhausted living in New York, like working. I have no clue, but I was falling asleep. Maybe I had a condition at the time. <laughs> it was his Uncle Bat's house, and they called him Uncle Bat because his real name is Bruce Wayne. I mean, it's brilliant. Wait, what? Yeah, they call him Uncle Bat. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like a, a cutout in the basement. It was a very fun time, but I kept falling asleep. I also would, I was the intern at the school at Steppenwolf in Chicago. Cool asleep on the floor often to the point where the like the students would give me a hard time about it <laughs> i would sleep in college There's and class floor sleeper stilling <laughs> i'm supposed to like make sure everything's running and i'm <gasps> on the floor while they're, they're doing like meisner like your eyes are blue your eyes are blue your eyes are blue <laughs> and i'm like your eyes are blue <laughs> <laughs> and then i remember falling uh, asleep in class all the time in college yeah. and and drooling down my arm That's so bad. hard that it slipped out from under me holy in, shit Maybe 20th century That's poetry. very Disney Channel kid show of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> best fell asleep with a jewel. Your elbow skip by the What about you? Man, falling asleep on planes, I, w- <laughs> I, I violently woken myself up. <laughs> where it's just like, I... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's terrifying. If you've ever... Quick apology to anyone who's been on the right <laughs> or left of this. Ha! <laughs> And also, it's like, what were you dreaming about? Where, and then I'm like, did the, the noise happen? Like sometimes as I woke up, so it's just catching myself, and that transition back to reality that you're almost like, you could guess what? You could glide back into reality yeah. by just being like, who, who? But I'm always like, oh, here we are, here we are. <laughs> like some fucking. I wish I could just go, and we're back. You yeah. Know? Uh, <laughs> Because it's fucking, I've, I've definitely had Mine is also people, usually like a, ha, yeah. or, or something. And the people, uh, I've, 80% of the time, they're like, fuck, man. Right. Or Skin. they're also asleep. Or it's just your close proximity. So, yeah, it's just. So embarrassing. The plane is so quiet, more often than not, and so, especially when sleep's going on. So, <laughs> to just jolt quickly, even if you're awake and you jolt quickly, 
that's probably better in a weird way because at least you, they can kind of just in their periphery see you kind of, you know, reaching for your bag than if you were to go like, bah! and they're like, whoa, well, I did see you reaching for your bag. So that quick move back didn't completely take me out of my... I don't remember. I don't miss travel, really. <laughs> no. I don't. I've been uh, flying around uh, a little, getting tested too many times. Although seeing uh, some of these tests that people are posting, I'm like, Yo, where do you get that test? The this one? I get one. I get the ones I got in Seattle, uh, all the way up to where I'm like, I don't know math. <laughs> like they were violating, but also I'm like, hey man, wherever you got to put it, like get the get the results. Sure, sure. And the first one was a drive. Th- all of them were drive up in Seattle. By the way, easy to make an appointment. Don't cost anything. Results back ASAP. Wow. I mean. Let's get with it. Uh, <laughs> by the way, if I'm not a comic in two years, I'll be a PTA mom. Yeah. The tests Let's were easy. Get with it. Appointment didn't cost a thing. Results got them right. The next day, and we <laughs> and we don't still have you know, but this but kids still not every kid has soup. Uh, you know. uh, but so the drive through doctor, I go, uh, he's got two things. I go, oh, two? And he goes, and a third one. I go, where's that one go? He goes, where do you think? And then I go, I don't know why I'm surprised this banter's happening. You're a drive through doctor. <laughs> and then he laughed. And then I go, uh, I go, uh, I go, man, you really committed to that third one going somewhere. I'm assuming you met rectally. And he was like, yeah. And I go, why'd you go there? He goes, you seem like you wanted it. And then I, which I know, again, was a joke. And then I was like, well, now I'm going to play the re- reality of the moment. And I just go, I do. <laughs> and then he didn't laugh. And I go, whoop, was joking there. Let's <laughs> switch doctors. <laughs> He's but like, it- pull ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no time for that sort of riff. Pay at the next window. You're like, I thought this was free. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw Whitney posting. And I know you went, yeah. did uh, her place. And... Uh, those looked like they still went in, but, but like... But not long, right? No. Like, I've seen, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yes. for a while. Yes. Yeah. Still not pleasant, but... No. Nah. Did uh, did she have a whole... Like, was it was there a doc? I wasn't a... there for the te- for the for for that round of testing. I went and did the podcast, yes. whatever that was. Yes, but, so that's what I was saying. I didn't do um, testing there, so okay. I didn't get it done to me, but it sounds like she's going to do more shows. Um I, she's Crazy. still looking for a name for the shows, but I think like negative, negative. Con- we'll we'll pitch later. Would you? <laughs> we'll edit this out. Uh, <laughs> would you do? I I it got me start to uh, think about even like a special during these times. Yeah. And some people are going to do specials during these times. Yes, and I want to be one of those people, and I've had talks with uh, HBO I'm, Max. Oh, dude, come on, guys! I, <laughs> I know most of you guys over there. Some of you real well. Um, uh, does the, if the more I sound like Tony Danza, does that help you, uh, want to give me a special? Come on guys. Yeah. But I, I, uh, also something different is very appealing about it. Like the outdoor show is when done right can be very cool. And, uh, I was at Chappelle's, um, summer camp a couple weeks ago and oh, that cool. shit was, was that fun? Unbelievable. I didn't get to go up unfortunately cause the lineup was so stacked that it was like, yeah, it's like, they do always, I follow Erica Badu? Or <laughs> hilarious. Do I go before John Mayer or after <laughs> Should Ashanti? Should I ask if we can squeeze yeah. in between Questlove and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and Tiffany Does Haddish? Keith Sweat open for me? <laughs> He's not going there, but I hope he does. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. I met him at the Comedy Store once. and mm. I'm sorry. Wow. Big bummer. I'm getting my 90s R&B guys mixed up. I put Keith Sweat and Brian McKnight in the oh, same Oh, okay. Boat. You met Brian McKnight? Yeah, at the I was on a store. flight with him once, and I was just like, We'll be right back with Who's Brian McKnight Stories Better? <laughs> Wait, what? No, your your story's better because I just kind of on admired the flight him. Psalm. Yeah, I just he, many... he came on with a with with a woman, and I was like, Oh my god! Did you start singing the song in your head? No, but I have done that before on accident. <laughs> that would have been great. I can help you get that bag. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to pee, but I'll bring you back some diet spice. <laughs> he uh, he crushed it for that era of music. Absolutely. And probably still crushing it. I think there was a video a little bit ago that he was on some sort of one of the COVID relief concerts even. And I was like, yeah, why not throw him in this mix? He's yeah. uh, provided us with enough hits. And, how, and, and to me, sometimes, yes, 
people's voices change, I guess, over time. But some yeah. people just will always have it the rest of their life. Oh, yeah. Like, I think he takes Aretha, care of the pipes. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be people who always have it. You say it. urethra? <laughs> Aretha. Oh, I swear Did I, to God. I could have possibly I said urethra. I said, you said urethra, and I was like, I do not know the current artists. <laughs> you know when you watch an MTV Video Music Awards, and they're like, we'll be right back with Baxter Schwimmy. <laughs> and, you know, he's like, and it's some kid with a sideways hat being like, Nick Carter can suck on these nuts. And they're like, you're throwing shade at Nick Carter? I'm, I'm tuning in. Uh, how many, by the way, I saw that guy on the plane stories, do you think? Because I literally just coming back from Seattle, Dennis Quaid was on our flight. Oh, my gosh. And uh, they, I think it misplaced his guitar after, so I got to watch like a whole, I felt like I was watching Isn't that crazy? TMZ before it's aired, where he was like, <sighs> my guitar. <laughs> and that's not Dennis Quaid, but I think I actually got the head cock pretty good. Yeah, a little good, bit. Because he always kind of walks, and even all his movies, he's always kind of like. He's got like, swag, yeah. Just like, kind of a little bit of that. Yeah. And he was, and then some guy was like, you know, people at the baggage claim were staring a little too obviously. And I was like, just let the guy live his life. I was going to say, like, look, some people would lose their minds at that. Yeah. If they lost something. But I guess he's always dealing with, like, this could be videotaped. and For sure. And like, I think he was keeping his cool. But he's walking by baggage claim and some guy goes, he pulls out his phone. And I almost want to be like, I almost want to slap it out of the guy's hand. Because I was like, he's perturbed about something. Dude. Yeah, let him be. Let him be. And he walks by and he, and they, and then. I think Quaid even like looks down and sees the phone, and then the guy goes, "Mr. Quaid, any any uh any uh movies coming out soon?" He's like, "We'll have to see." He's like, "Oh, done." He goes, "We'll have to see when they come out," and kind of smiled and gave him a little moment. And I was like, "Okay, cool." Like All he right. gave you gave you something, put the yeah, phone. Yeah, maybe away. it would. You don't know how certain celebrities operate. Some of them actually like need it, you yeah. know. So maybe that switched his mood to a good mood. Yeah, and maybe it would have been great if the guy was like. If you uh, come over here and look into the camera while you say that, I'll tell you where your guitar is. <laughs> huh? Um, but <laughs> grips him by the throat. <laughs> Good. I I do have regrets of not approaching Robin Williams when he was at Meltdown because he was like someone I idolized as a kid. And, a thousand percent. Yeah. I just watched my buddy do this uh, documentary. Uh, I think is coming out soon just got distribution it's about the louis body dementia that he had oh, okay and focuses more on that and his wife is a huge uh part of it it's fucking heartbreaking but yeah the disease is um very awful to deal with for everyone for the family for them yeah, yeah. and and just how he was like you know when they had to be in separate beds finally because he was not sleeping and she wasn't sleeping and he was kind of somewhat violent at times in bed when he was it, they just had to so she needed to get some sleep while she was taking care of them and she couldn't while she was with them so right. he couldn't process that and thought he's like does this mean we're getting divorced like that's where his brain went yeah and it, and he was so sad about it and yeah. just couldn't put it together and uh I, the these diseases when the mind goes and betrays you it's like the most awful because there's no making sense of it yeah um Okay, well, thanks for coming on, Beth. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I wish I'd said something because I think he might be maybe one of those types of people. He would have. Who would have, like, appreciated it and maybe given me a hug and I would have been complete. He would have. And you're so sweet and charming I that he would have. I didn't want to bother him. But well, I just. I had that exact same thought, and I did, and I have a picture framed on my wall of it when he was opening for Eddie Pepitone oh at the lab, the old lab, gosh. the old improv lab. You were out here for that, right? The little black box? Mm -hmm. I wish it were still like that. That space, I don't and know it, why. And make it BYOB. <clears throat> I know it's not right in the liquor license and blah, 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 but God, I wish it were still like that. There's a tiny little sound booth in the corner. It was so... It was perfect. Yeah, I agree. I wonder if it's our theater backgrounds that we made us love it even more. Because it was it, like this, and then it, now it's like this. It sucks now. Yeah, uh, we used to walk in and it was straight ahead. Yes, yeah, and it was just, just a little room. And even if there were seven people in there, it was awesome. You could have had four, I agree. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, Eddie uh, was like, hey, Robin's coming down tonight. And we, you know, over a handful of, of uh, chats and hangs, he just... And and recently enough been aware of my love for him to, to say, hey, come down here if you want. <clears throat> and I think I was going anyway because i hadn't seen eddie's hour yet and i yeah. was just like i gotta see this and uh and i'm in the green room as i like, come back here Robin's there. i'm just listening to them just all shoot the shit and he's got a big beard and he's just looks like he's just i mean you feel so warm just being around him mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he's telling him to go up and he's like no 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 i don't want to go no. it's like, sure, sure, you're the, you know and then made some joke about eddie and then eddie laughed and 
And then he's like, all right, I'll go up and do 10 minutes. You know, he's like, and everyone was like, you gotta. And he, and he really, he really was just like, I don't, it's not my, like, I'll feel like you have too many. And everyone was like, you go up. And maybe Elon Gould was there and he was like, you know, you go up, Dana Gould. Like, I won't go if you, and he goes up there and obviously didn't have a game plan. Somebody's phone rang right out of the gate. He just did 15 minutes on cell phones. <laughs> and it was like, what? And then afterwards he's walking out, people are going nuts and somebody st- and I was like, "Don't do it, man." Like somebody always told me, like, "Be on the same level." Like they're a peer. But in my head, I'm like, "There's no way I'm gonna ever be with Rob I'm Williams so again." Glad I just you did. don't. I just You're don't. You're listening to me. Who has the regret of not doing <clears throat> it? We can Photoshop you into yes, the please. picture I have. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's he's walking out, literally right at the back that where the improv, where that bar now, where the door is. Yeah. And I just he just taken a picture, and I was right there. I go, Robin. I go. I, I just you're. You're the reason I'm doing this. And he just said, oh. And I go, do you mind? And he was just like, oh. Took it, smiled. I mean, I'm just fucking. Oh. And, but that I'm being so said. I'm you got that. That being said, I saw Rachel Ray run once at Burbank Airport and did not ask for a picture. So, <laughs> your sister? You know, you give a little. What's that? I'm just kidding. I said, your sister? Hilarious. <laughs> By the way, it was supposed to be a girl. Couldn't see this in the sonogram. <laughs> was going to be Rachel Ray. We'll be right back. No. Uh, that's a true story. We'll be right back. We're making no key. <laughs> <laughs> that's by the way add that if that's your if you do an SNL audition tape yeah. that's your Rachel Ray <laughs> I'm Rachel Ray today uh, we're gonna make uh, you know what we're gonna make something great we'll be right back we're making gnocchi she just says plain gnocchi that's actually a great teaser we'll be right back and then slip in what you're making at the end and people are like fuck they wait for that moment uh, uh, we, she's cool she is cool I, 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 she's on the episode I co-wrote with Pete I crashing. was just about to ask. A, oh, that's my. Um, what's it called? You're uh, talking parking. about my writing credits alarm. No. <laughs> it's that time was, to plug that my. That was actually the name drop credits. alarm. <laughs> the name drop alarm. And this is my niece. Oh my fucking Hilarious. god! That is. I love her. This is like mini me. I have a couple mini me's, which is why I feel like um, from my sisters. I mean. What is her name? Can you say it? This is Grace. Beautiful name. You can tell she's doing that to be silly. Yes. Is she four? Yeah, she's uh, yeah, about three or four. I, cool. I never keep track of their ages, honestly. Uh, we're back. And we're back. <laughs> Ooh. What's that from? SNL. And we're back. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I, I think. If you do. <laughs> some little phrase in a weird voice always sounds like it potentially could be from something. Yeah. I used to do that in high school if I did, uh, if something like tanked, if I'm just trying to be a goofball in front of friends and girls especially, and they're like, what was that? And I was like, oh, you haven't seen that movie? <laughs> and they'd be like, no. That's I was like, genius. Al Pacino. He said, like, you guys got the drinking fountain. You, s- you don't, do you have cable? You know, and then oh, spin it on save. them. Yeah. Uh, uh, save or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about like the special and like, how you have to get things to work. Like, saves can work, too. Yes. But it's better to find the... I'm stating the obvious here. You, I was just thinking in my head, like, I had I had a period of time where I was, like, m- saving more than just fix the joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't do a save. Just fix the joke. Wait, but so... Well, before we stop, we were going to talk about... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, crashing. Oh, yeah. we were going to yeah. talk about specials outside, which I want to hit before we wrap yes. up. Um, but real quick... Yeah, where were we talking about crashing from? I'll get I'll get us back there. Okay, thank you. But real quick, <clears throat> you just doing the and we're back, <laughs> and then having that be, um, and I was like, that sounds like it's from something, and we were trying to figure it out. It reminded me real quick. And did you ever do extra work? Yes. Okay. What was your? Ex- and quite honestly, people who comics and people who refuse to do it eat. My ass, and get yourself. And when you're a done job. eating Beth's ass, come on over <laughs> yeah. to the Ray House and I, I, grab I, a big old spoon. <laughs> you know what? It could be a small spoon. I don't want to tell you how much to eat, but you're eating it. <laughs> Teaspoon's fine with me. No, I just like there's nothing. Another to- phrase that sounds like it's fine. <laughs> Teaspoon's fine with me. Uh, my next character is an old lady who loves to eat ass. <laughs> no matter the measuring amount. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a little bite. Oh my God, that's very uh, funny. But anyway, what, uh, there's nothing that irks me more than comics. Like, I'm poor. I don't. I'm like, get your ass to the extra line. You are in LA where there's so many ways to make money. 
the amount of whatever I'm not anyway gonna get that's the a tangent of jobs I did, freaking work but the extra conversations it is a pandemic but okay sorry the, <laughs> yeah a little tougher now <laughs> but uh but when we get back uh <laughs> but the amount of conversations that were unreal between some of these like uh veteran extras <laughs> which is a great band name yeah I don't know if it's a hootie in the blowfish cover band but veteran, veteran extras, extras is a great improv troupe name Whoa. Okay. Keep yes, going. and yeah. we should start it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they, uh, this one guy in this one experience I had, which was about a week on this uh, movie, and uh, and I'm, you know, like, yeah, I'll shoot the shit, get to know some of these people, and whatever, yeah. and, and I'm social. I don't want to just sit in the corner for hours. That's boring. And this one guy, though, was like, you know, not the king of the extras, but he definitely was like the, yeah, Julia Roberts is great, isn't she? And you're like, <laughs> what? And he's like, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I, was somebody talking to you? <laughs> and he was like, you know, when I worked on Notting Hill, <laughs> she was, you know, look, she's, and I could see you kind of like staring off at her being like, you know, is she going to come up and talk to me? Probably not, but that's okay. <laughs> In my experience, <laughs> when Jules, <laughs> and you're like, don't, don't say that. When Jules, you're like, don't abbreviate the last name. No. When Jules Robs would, <laughs> would come over to, to where we're at, you know, it's a different space. Well, but we're still actors. <laughs> She's an actor, I'm an actor. What are you? I don't know. I'm upset that I'm in this conversation. <laughs> and they were just kind of like, talk about the experience as if it was more than. Yeah. And. You know, in hindsight, I'm like, who am I to judge whatever you're trying to soak up from that experience? You know, yeah. if that's making you happy to be there. And honestly, he had the best perspective of anyone. Because right. he's just like. So positive. Totally. They're the bringers of the acting world. The bringer shows. Got it. Of the acting yep. world. Yeah. But so hilarious also. You think you don't. I, I thought you are going to go like, uh, oh, yeah. That's uh, like, like, I can imagine him being like that. You like Nora? Like, knowing her stand-in's first name. Oh, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm like, sure he did, yeah. Yeah. Today, it's Nora. Usually, it's Martha. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, That's okay, yeah, a yeah, level yeah. of specificity yeah, that, that yeah. he's, yeah. And by, by the way, no one gave him that info. No. He, like, somehow lurked around. <laughs> she's two pounds, uh, two pounds lighter. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, since she started Tybo, but you know, her dad actually runs a course, you know. And then, uh, yeah, knows the crafty guy's names. Yeah. You done with those crackers? You know, Marty's uh, bringing a fresh batch tomorrow. <laughs> Fresh batch of crackers? <laughs> you mean he's just buying another box from Ralph's? Okay, yeah. dude. Is this your first day? Uh, I can tell it's your first day. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Settle in. You're probably Easy. nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably nervous. <laughs> Being on a fucking... You're probably nervous sitting here amongst 300 other people just staring at the ground. But... <laughs> <laughs> contemplating your life. But I can see... Relax um, and the camera will come to you. <laughs> oh, my God. That's... Fucking! If he had said that, I would have been like, "Dude, just that's actually." Really <laughs> Is that how it works? I don't know how movies are made. <laughs> Mine was the breakup. That was my first extra movie. Very cool in Chicago. Yeah, I was in this in in. Uh, I, could, I almost couldn't think of it. Wrigley Field for hours and hours and hours and hours in that baseball scene. That's kind of cool. It was cool, right? Yeah, I made some friends. I mean, you know, like I was doing the same thing where you just like. Who are these people? You get to see where you so Vincent and Jen and mm -hmm. were there. Yeah, never got too close, but definitely saw them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah it was first cool. taste of it, right? Or, yeah. It was seeing, cool. Uh, I was real... all I mean, I, come on, I also was loving Vince Vaughn at the time. Like wedding crashers and Oh, that had just probably come out. Yeah, I was yeah, like was on top in of the love world. with him, yeah. Uh Dodgeball. Dodgeball, yeah. Anyway, sorry, where were we? we, we so okay, so so crashing. I took us on a We we're getting into crashing uh because I was talking about an episode. Um, and now I'm forgetting. Oh, Rachel Ray. Co-wrote with Rachel Ray. Yes. When Pete went on the show. Yeah. Phenomenal. And again, I was saying I've always kind of been enamored with just, it's at a certain point you go, this person's probably got billions. Uh, how, what's the appeal here? I need to like, I need to check in and make sure this checks out, you know? And, uh, and I was like, yeah, she's fucking charismatic and charming and knows her shit and she's just moving and shaking yeah. and and because i would see like you know anyone can make spaghetti in eight minutes how about four and i was like <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't know how about i don't know how <laughs> eight, about four eight seems fine but what, what's going on with four minute sp uh, spaghetti but but she uh 
in the 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 episode was so great, and that was such a great, um, just very clever out. Like again, and this is why you're uh, you're such a great writer. Uh, Thank you. On and off stage, uh, to come up with stuff like a world like that is is pretty cool. The warm, yeah. I mean, in some ways too. Like I always yearn for like grounded things and more reality yep. so there were times of crashing where i was like nah this would never happen you know like yes. there was definitely that f- for me personally but i'm one writer of a group so yeah. uh, and i'm not the executive producer so th- so there were definitely times where you're feeling like he's not gonna get a warm-up gig this that early or whatever it yeah. is but it's television you have to kind of drop that guard a little yeah and- yeah ha- it, it, does that happen in i mean obviously like, do they- i make those complaints to the <laughs> <laughs> hey Judd, is that I your do. real name? Yeah, quite honestly, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's enough? a writer's room, yeah. But it's also they've when they as, uh, assemble a writer's room like that for a big HBO show and Apatow's at the helm. Is it uh, most of you guys knew each other? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some new people that <clears throat> I met when I was there. There was a couple veteran writers that were with us for season one. Um, that tougher I to be a veteran. Met. Oh, sorry, no, that you've never met. Yeah, I never met. I'm just like like basically guys that Judd had known from way back. Wow. Yeah. Tougher to be those guys uh, with the new young comics Come or on, for yeah. you guys coming in trying to get your feet wet? Because you've written on other stuff, right? Before that? That was my first writing job. Gotcha. And I mean, I had, yeah, I'd spent some time. Yeah, that was my first television writing yes. job. Um, I mean, I think of like Ed Krasnick, who was one of them. He's such a nice guy, but like, you know, I don't know. I probably thought he was comfortable and knew what he was doing, but maybe he f- was feeling the opposite. Like, there were these young comics, I can't keep up. Or, yeah. I don't know how he was feeling. He was yeah. a nice guy, but I'm just saying, I would I would think it would be well, harder. Let's bring for him out. Me. Ed? Ed? You... <laughs> He's under my chair. <laughs> See that tiny? What? <laughs> he was small. No. I used to do that joke with Brad where I'd be like, if I talked about Brad, I'd be like, uh, Brad Williams, my podcast co host. Well, he actually might be under your chair. Check the, check the <laughs> I go, He's crafty. Uh, and it would get a laugh. Uh, Brad. But, uh, is there a, uh, an element to the writer's room that's like nerve wracking if you're under, if you've got like the story laid out and then it's just kind of, and then you're just kind of pitching jokes? Yeah, sometimes it can feel like a little, like it depends on the structure of the room, who's who's the showrunner, who, how they run things. Cause like every writer's room really is different, of course. It's a different assembly of people and a different showrunner. <clears> and, <throat> and sometimes people are more strict and sometimes they're more laid back. But and Pete's at the helm, so he's in there, right? Pete's, yeah, mostly at the helm there, and then Judd pops in, and he's kind of like the final say. Oh, I mean, this is in the past. I'm acting like yeah. we're in it right now. Yeah. But, um, I mean, sometimes, like, we would be pitching, or what you might call, like, blue sky, if, if, just thinking about the possibilities forever. Like, spend a whole day just sharing stories. Like, that was the fun of it, because it was a show about stand-up. Yes. And as much as it's an individual experience... You and I both did laughs in Kirkland and had that guy pick us up from the airport, like, Dave, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, <laughs> we can relate to that and maybe put it in to the story. And they were probably, uh, you know, at your mercy for that, right? Like, please share. I mean, did they, to even get the job, was it sit down and like, tell me a, a hell gig? Or? Um, Mine was based off a, a, my packet, like, or not my packet, my... Like I had a pilot script written just about my own life. That was cool. like the first thing I wrote, and uh, so that sent. And then that was when Judd was like getting back into stand up. Mm. So that's how I met him. Even was him being at the Improv and at Largo, and you know, bouncing around. <laughs> I, I don't think he remembers this, but one time he bumped me at the store, and he was nice enough to ask. You don't ask. If you're the famous person, you bump, and that's that. Yeah. But he's too nice. And he was like, is, is it okay if I like go up before you? And I was like, how much are you going to do? <laughs> oh. I don't know if he remembers that or not. This was before the job. So obviously maybe not. And I don't think he's the type of person who holds a grudge. In fact, he's very forgiving. Um, but like nothing I've done, but I've just seen him, seen him be gracious. So yeah, that's so funny. I said, how much time are you going to do to he, Judd Apatow? He probably was like, so thrown off that you said that back was like, yeah, he's like, I don't know, 10? How yeah, much do you yeah, want yeah, me to do? Yeah, yeah, then he was just so sweet about it. Oh, man. I think I had, a, I had to get the Laugh Factory or something afterwards. That's so, so funny. But yeah. anyway, I still got the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That will, uh, be- so anyway, sorry, I, the packet, and then also, like, this is the thing about stand-up. We didn't get into to it to do acting gigs. Like, you never want to, we've seen actors start to do stand-up, and you can tell that that's why they're doing it, is yep. to, like, get more work. So yep. it's like, it has to be a... In so many ways, stand-up's a beautiful way to show that you can write 
act and that you're normal. I mean, sure. you're showing your personality. Yeah, it's the best way. So it's kind of like, and this is the worst way to put it, and everyone forgive me, but it's, it is a mini audition. You should never look at it like that. Yeah. <laughs> but it just happens to be that because you're seeing someone and who they are. And typically that is who they are. Which is why I was so impressed to go back to the compliment about you being so personal and poignant with your, uh, you know, real life encounters so early and quickly and brilliantly. And I was like, oh, man, like, you know what your show is by watching a 10 minute set. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah. And uh to shift gears before I'm just going to say, too, though, like, I, I, that's, like, such a high compliment, and yeah, thank you very much. Of course. Because, like, you know, sometimes it comes at a cost, and you feel like, ah, oh, you have, a, like, a vulnerability hangover or something like that. Yes. Okay? So sometimes you have to learn the boundaries of what you share and what you don't yep. share. But also, on the same note, you're not the opposite of me. You are personal. You share things. But also, like, you know, I can watch you and appreciate you for what you are, too. And I'm not saying you need me to say this, but it's like, you know, I love your ability to improvise and be silly in your voices and your crowd work and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, yeah. whatever. I'm just saying to each their own. I we each have our own style that we yeah, can, like, yeah. love in the other. And, totally. You know what I mean? It is cool, though, to be able to, uh, you know, and it's probably more so when you get inspired you know, by anything in this business, which I feel like, at least for me, like even watching a good movie, it's seldom that I'll see a performance where I'm like, oh man, I got to take classes all day, every day. Like just right. the, the the overwhelming. And again, we see and consume so much comedy and are doing it so much that you can sometimes, you know, really be uh, cautious with how much you want to take in, which then can Very minimize nice. the opportunity to be inspired so when you're a little more selective by watching the people you want to watch, you're kind of, I think like, you know, now I'll watch full things of people like yourself that, that I really, that I will get inspired from because I enjoy it. And I'm, I'm watching with an eyes of like all in to where like, it, it just, I'm like, man, it, it makes me want to be more personal, be tighter with my jokes. You know, you've got a real clever way of, of taking things away from what it is and bringing it back. Um, Thank you and, so much. Uh, oh, yeah. Honestly, that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, also, I feel it's cool that I feel like I've seen you now for a while, and and I know you were doing it before I met you, but at a point to where I've the growth I've been like, um, you know, firsthand seen. Yeah. Uh, and then to culminate in the in the special girl dowdy girl girl cut. We'll edit this out. <laughs> Stop. Cut one more time. You know that movie, Girl Daddy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> By the way, that. Girl Daddy, HBO Max, streaming now. <laughs> um, but uh, outdoor shows, outdoor yeah. specials. You know people that are going to start to do that. I saw the one at the Pasadena. It looked like Erica Rhodes and, yeah. and Daniel Webb. Those are the two I saw. I they looked really cool from what I saw Erica and Daniel Webb's post. Right. So that's like, that's Comedy Dynamics doing an but, hour special or? and. I mean, whatever. I'll rip on him yeah. and not paying enough. Okay, so. <laughs> um, but the opportunity, I guess, you want to. Well, I, I understand that. Risk reward. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But the, the driving thing, though, but the car thing—that is what I, I don't. I wouldn't want to do that. Me neither. I see some of these socially distanced outdoor shows, even like Mark Norman doing stuff in a park or whatever. Like, yeah. People and I, you know, I, have you done any clubs since any of this has happened or when no. it shut down? I haven't performed since my special. Where did I just March hear, 7th. Where did I just hear you talk about that actually? Mm. Or did you talk I might have just said it. Oh, I I in my Instagram story or something like I have I'm doing a show this Saturday. I'm doing a Paul and Matt's show outside for the first time and oh, I, cool. I I just Instagram story like I haven't performed since my special. No, was it No, what fuck. Maybe Tom and Fortune? Podcast? Yeah, maybe that yeah. Or Netflix is a joke yeah, video. Yeah, cuz you that? yeah, or maybe it was <clears throat> Whitney's but about how you performed uh and then you did, uh, you, like you you had a a weekend after your special to yeah, do right, and then yeah. you did that. And I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Yeah. So it was like I was. It was like a vestige of the tour because we didn't know when I was was gonna shoot. So I had all these dates lined up to run the special and a couple openings here and there. Like, will we get this? Because you know you have to bid for yep. the theater. Yep. So it was like if we don't get this, we'll do that. And I you I didn't want to cancel on the club like a month out or something. That's nice. But then coronavirus hit and I had to make that decision myself. And basically I'm texting all the comics across the country. Like, are you going up tonight? Are you going up tonight? I don't yep. want to do the wrong yep. thing. Yep. I know people were canceling. Yeah. So I canceled. Wow. St. Louis. So, 
Wow, so are you nervous to perform first yes. time? Yes. Yeah. I'm terrified. It'll be fine. Sarah was out there when I was at Chappelle's camp. Yeah. You know, you're tight with her. Yeah. And she, she, was I, she said she uh, was going up. It was her first time since whenever. And I was like, whoa. I was like, I was like starstruck. I was like, because I've done maybe, yeah. I did a club, in two clubs in May <clears throat> in Arizona and Utah before Arizona became uh, really um, chaotic. And then Minnesota at Acme about a month ago. One of the better experiences. Okay. Very spread out. Traveling, I don't have an issue with because I mask it the whole time. I'm real safe. I'm t- t- wiping things. It's just, uh, but the uh, the people were spread out. And it was just amazing to have the people. Like, the I see these driving exchange. things. You have to have the energy exchange. The, there's the windshield. That's why Zoom's not working. The windshield behind you. I think um, it was... Annie at Whitney's like little outdoor show that was making a joke about how I have to retrain my brain. Honking means you've done something bad and that they're honking at these outdoor shows. Like it's a joke, like ha ha ha. And she's, she, it was a yeah. better joke than that. I'm yeah. just saying she was saying, we'll you have cut to it reach- out. We'll edit in what Annie said, <laughs> but cut to Annie. Yeah, I don't even, and, and I, the people that are doing the driving shows clearly got a, a cool following and we yeah. able to get that going to make money. Mine's like just my mom, like, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I haven't done it, so I don't know. Uh, I've Brad told me it was fun or whatever, but I just, for myself, I know myself, <laughs> and I don't, I don't even, I don't, I just, I, like, it was night and day, like, from, I just, I don't know, if you, looking at them through the cars, and it's just, the, I mean, even doing the first Zoom show, I was like, oh, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and it's still, but I was still seeing people, yeah. and I was hearing laughter like that, even if it was a little... Whatever. I did one and it made me nervous too. I yeah. noticed the Zoom show even. Yeah. But the car is like, here's my other thing. It's like, it's just tough right now dealing with the coronavirus. I've said this before in a podcast, but it's like, we all used to do at midnight. We used to get attacked on Twitter after like, well, I came up with that hashtag first. It's like, it's like this coronavirus for comics is going to be a challenge, yep. the quarantine, because it's like, we've all been given a topic. We're, thousands of comics are writing about this. So how are you going to be original? And that's actually can be sort of, paralyzing yeah so you obviously have to trust in yourself that you're gonna make it as original as you possibly can but that's something that's also stopped me where i'm like do we need another person talking about the you know mm-hmm. as naomi at paragon would say the coco yeah <laughs> she also calls it the pandemic <laughs> it's really fun her dailies are very funny anyway who is this again naomi at paragon who's that she i follow her at black tris done she's very funny do you have uh, accounts that you follow and you're, they're your daily like? Yeah, see, that's the thing. So I'm I'm saying like, uh, this is one big at midnight prompt that we're gonna get attacked for all being the same. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm watching her and it's hilarious. So, yeah. uh, are, are you writing? Uh, is your set consisting of? I have stuff? no set. Yeah, so you're just gonna wing it. Yeah, I have no set. Cool. I don't know. I'm gonna have to probably pull probably a story some... that got cut from the special and start running that again. Cool. I have to like start somewhere, but yeah. Trust that I've written nothing. Do you not even feel uh, like you want to do it because you're like, where am I? Because that's the thing too. When I was, I'm doing helium in September, and then after that, I I don't know, and I'm right. kind of just deciding. And my dad lives up there, so that was the other excuse. And I love the club, but Same. I was like, yeah. And I was like, but but you feel that start and stop of like, I was like, if I don't have some things on the horizon like that, then I won't push myself to yeah. kind of. And I think we're both at a point to where we're conditioned to just seeing our lives in the world in a way where something happens and you, it, you know, triggers something and you're making note here and there and you're yeah. always going to be doing that. But to have an actual place where I'm going to have to do it, and even like at Acme, I was like, oh, I was there a year ago. And I was like, if I picked that up and it was two months out and I was like, I'll really buckle down and write more than I have been just kind of double time it. And, and it was, and I felt good cause I had a lot more stuff to talk about. And, and, um, and so that having that little benchmark, but if you don't have that, and even after September, I'm going to be like probably back to a, a slower pace of like, yeah. all right, well, what am I writing a bunch of jokes for, to do it? And that's why the idea of like, I would love to do an outdoor special. Maybe even home in a backyard. I mean, that might be your best option. Like Chappelle, Chappelle style in yeah. that it's maybe in Seattle or something. Whoa. Like an outdoor, something w- look of an outdoor like wedding, that. essentially. Because yeah. they crush, I mean, it's. The, vet, the stage and it was a big field that was real spread out. I mean, they, everything was just first class, and and uh, that is seems like obviously weather will get in the way in some places coming up, but right. that seems like the safe. I mean, move. I was just gonna say like, not I'm not kidding. It just hit me yesterday where I was like, oh, these New York outdoor shows are 
short lived. Yep. Unless they get heating lamps. Yep. I mean. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I haven't, didn't think that far ahead. Where I was like, New York's doing good. And I was like, Oh, they're about to have to, a winter. Yeah. Winter is coming. <sighs> I mean, it is. It's freaking. We're in a weird time. Yeah. And then also, it's like you're saying you're in a place where you're building. Okay. But what do I have to build for, and why? Because nor I just I don't. That sounds so negative, but I'm just saying like. It depends on when you see a comic. If you saw me in Seattle right before I filmed this, you're like, that comic's amazing. I love her. Because I was about to film a special. If you see me on Saturday, you're going to be like, is she good at comedy? Unless I'm repeating stuff from my special, which is fine, but I barely yeah. remember it. And I wrote it. Wow, really? Yeah. I mean, I did the Sklar's Zoom show and I was having trouble. Like, as it's coming, you're like, am I going to remember this bit that I wrote? Whoa. It's so weird. I don't know. Do you miss concerts? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. What do you miss the most? Make it sad and then we'll then we'll wrap this up. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> oh, I do miss my mom too. I know. And your mom. I do miss your mom as well. Yeah. And I miss, I mean, I miss my family. That's the main thing. The kids are growing up so fast, it feels. Yeah. It's been like five months since I've seen them. Now. Any thoughts to just go back there and do what some people are doing? I might. I mean, I'm from Dayton, so I could maybe try to hit up Chappelle and oh, yeah. go there. and. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's where I flew into. Yeah, I'm from there. Uh, so that's of rad. course everybody's texting me like, "When are you coming to Camp Chappelle? I'm like, "I'm not friends with him. <laughs> I don't, I don't know when it, I mean, if, I or could, when I'm I coming." Put you, I know his uh, tour manager real well, and um, I could, you know, I'm sure also you, also Sarah. Yeah, I just yeah, feel like I'm not ways. someone who like loves to. Ask, I don't really ask favors, and so I've. It's not like I don't know. If it you just went didn't home feel and pressing. you were out there. That's, it would be weird of me not to be like, hi, I'm a comic. Can I come by or something? And I it's guess. Sarah's blessing. I mean, like, yeah. you know, I'd put a stamp on there for you. Yeah. Which I you. don't know what that would do. But <laughs> um, yeah, what do you miss most? Family. I was, you know, up in Seattle for a little bit and already back and already withdrawals. Just because, especially with folks getting older, I just want to soak up the time. And I've always wanted to go back for an extended period. So now it's like, it feels I like have no reason to not. I'm with you on that. And can do... Uh, you know, all my VO stuff from anywhere. And, and, but I still, there was something about being here that I love, but I don't, I feel like the energy shifted. So I don't feel like this real push like I did being here. Right. And I almost get it more so being not here because, you know, also I just, I don't feel like I can live normal life here. And even up in Washington where the weather's great and you'll get a winter up there too, but it just was a little more, I just felt, slower and chiller and, and really just having family at the disposal made me feel like I was, had more of a purpose right now. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I miss, uh, I miss say by the bell, the college years. That was a great show. <laughs> <laughs> I miss, it was a great theme song. Uh, I don't know. I miss, uh, I hear you on that. It is like, you know, when you're here, if you stay for a holiday, if especially your, your, your early years in L.A., if you don't have the money to go home, it does feel like a ghost town. And I think people have left in some ways because they can't afford to live here if they're pursuing a dream. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, and also as you age as a comic in general and you're aging in life and, you know, you're approaching a new part chapter of your life with your fiancé, it's like, you know, where do I want to be? And yeah. what's most fulfilling where I'm going to be happiest? and I don't know. So, like, there is part of me that's also considering maybe, like you're saying, going back home. But A little bit. It's it's an interesting time for everybody. Um, I'm thankful to be able to stay. If I if this happened to me when I first moved here, I would already be oh, home. Oh, yeah, that's happening. That's, yeah. And I don't really... So, I, I'm very... That's another thing I'm cognizant of. I've worked hard for it, but my comfortability right now. And, of course, I'm doing what I can to, you know, check in on my friends and stuff and... Um, donate to things I care about. I'm not over here a millionaire. I'm just saying I can weather this right now. So, and if you think about it too, it's like you work for years without pay to get a special ideally. Yeah. So if you get a, if you have a special year, then you got paid for your special. Yep. But the other years you didn't get paid for your special. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like I'm just saying it's, I happen to be in a place that was convenient, but mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't just about to record. Right. Chris Red, Moses Storm, those guys were. Just about to do it. Yeah. Fuck. This is getting depressing, but you know what I mean. It's um, like it's yeah hard for people who <laughs> work Everyone's for years. Everyone's having to adjust on every front. Yeah. But uh, and you know, and when you feel like, fuck, I just need a break. Well, 
Head on over to HBO Max. <laughs> Check out Beth Stelling's Girl Daddy Special. It's so fucking good. <laughs> Thank You're you. so funny. Beth, we end every episode now by uh, by um, by uh, us coming up with a theme song for the show. Uh, just acapella beatbox style. And it doesn't Ooh. have to make it. We can just kind of flow off each other. And by the way, by me saying we end every episode, this is the first time we're going to do it. <laughs> I just thought of it. We might have this carry over to the next step, or this might live and die right here. So just because we came in so musically We did. Connected. It was musically charged. Yeah. <laughs> musically charged. <laughs> is that one of veteran... Fuck, what was it? Veteran, veteran Extras. Veteran Extras. That's their single. <laughs> Can I get a suggestion? <laughs> Uh, Charmin. <laughs> Call back. All night long. <laughs> All night. Could they get Lionel? Night. Could they get About Lionel to do a Charmin commercial night. real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Never. He's so much. No, gosh. I freaking got into American Idol because of Lionel. He's great. Oh, my gosh. Is he great? He's unreal. And Luke he- Bryan grew on me. Yeah? Yeah, the I'm guy who's with a- the other host. Yeah. Katy Perry's in there just being cuckoo for Katy Perry yeah. <laughs> I mean, she like they did a Disney episode once which was cool because they were singing all Disney songs yeah. but she was dressed as one of the princesses I don't think the other guys were I think Lionel Richie was like what princess are you I don't do voices but he was like who are you supposed to be and uh, she was dressed like a salt shaker I think the week before so yeah this she was, was a, it was just extravagant and Luke Bryan <laughs> was like it's fucking, you know, well, I didn't get you supposed to dress up <laughs> And he was being all charming, and and uh, but she was just out there. Yeah, right. she really was. Okay. Here we go. Mm. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It's about last, last night. night. You it's gave me. Are we rapping? Oh, I, oh, oh, are we? Yeah. You gave me a fright. This is more like spoken. By the word. way, the best raps always <laughs> include someone in mid rap going, "Are we rapping?" Please forgive me. <laughs> Don't know what, where that lyric lands in the song, but that's how we're ending. <laughs> Please forgive that's, me. That's like a, that's like an Ani DeFranco, I li- I Alanis. Just got hot. Please forgive <laughs> me. <laughs> I can't. It's, good. it's part of a song. It's coming back to me. For what I say and do, or something like that. Please forgive me. I can't, can't stop, stop loving, loving you. you. On the night, <laughs> when I'm sending of you, please, please forgive, forgive me. me. I can't stop, stop loving you. Who's, is that Shania Twain? Who is that? I don't even know. Martina but McBride? You've got the sneaky good voice. It's you and Brent Warren. <laughs> like, you'll go up there and just be like, I don't know, like, make some bet. And then you're like, oh, and we're like, what the fuck? They're hot, too? This is annoying. I'll take a teaspoon or whatever bastards. it was. <laughs> uh, Beth Selling, Girl Daddy, HBO Max. I love oh, you so much. Thanks I for being you. here. Yeah. I don't know where this comes from. <laughs> I've been doing this on th- this emoji, which I thought was I've been thank doing, that's you. That's like my main emoji but I think now. it's I think it's thank you. And Blessings. Bless. Appreciate you, right? Yeah. Please, appreciate appreciate you. you. And a little zip zap zap. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Turn the mics back on. 